Hey everyone and welcome back to Remember This Tech. In today's video we're going to be doing something a little bit different in that I'm going to sh show you on how I set up solar power for my shed. The way I set it up was the slightly easier way to do solar power. I only needed enough solar power in the shed to basically have um, overhead lights, um, charge up some batteries for my cordless tools, maybe put in a fan. So. Didn't need a ton. In this video, I'm gonna kind of describe the process. For everything I used, I'll have links in the description section below. Now, some of you may want to go the full route where you buy an inverter, a solar charge controller, um, and a battery bank. And you can do that, but it's a little bit more complicated and you have to match everything up and ensure that you're gonna have enough battery storage, wire the batteries up correctly, and you know, voltage wise and such. So the way I did this is the easier way to do this. Starting off, I bought this EcoFlow unit. It's a 600 watt peak battery generator, 256 watt hour capacity, 300 watt output surge to 600 watts, 3000 battery cycles up to 80% capacity for 10 years. This model has two AC output plugs right here. It's got a US, it's got two USB-A ports and a USB-C. Cigarette lighter, or actually turn on and off the DC here for the cigarette lighter and the DC, the AC over here. And you can turn it on and it tells you the charge amount and how long you're gonna get off of that charge estimated. Well, it's idle now, so when you start drawing power, you'll get the updates. And in the back, you have an AC port for uh, charging through the house for fast charging and you have a plug for your MC4 and they have a cord just for that that adapts and plugs in the back of the EcoFlows and connects to the MC4 solar connectors. That's important because this unit didn't come with a adapter and but my larger unit did and I used that one. Why did I buy this little EcoFlow? A, it's got a built-in charge controller. B, it has a built-in inverter. C, it's got built-in lithium ion battery. So, it takes the guesswork out of things. It's got just enough power to do what I need in my shed. Instead of buying those batteries, buying the inverter, buying the solar charger, so there you go. Downfalls is that it's limited capacity. You can only take an input of certain amount of volts or amps, depending on how you wire your solar panels. Keep that in mind. The larger unit can take up to 200 watts through the solar panel input. This one can only take 100, 110. And there's a caveat, which I'll show you in the video later on. You keep watching. Wired in series, this unit with 200 watt panels won't work. It'll get an overload because it's too much too many volts going in. If you wire them in parallel, it works just fine. And also parallel works better in dim conditions, lower sunlight. I used a Leviton ceramic overhead light mount for a light bulb. It also has a three prong um, outlet on there. So in case you wanna run power from your overhead light to add an addition to this. And what I did was I got a junction box, ran Romex wire, into the junction box, wired up the ceramic light bulb and outlet, secured it to the junction box, cover plates put on, mounted it to the top uh, in the ceiling of the shed, ran their Omex up and over and down, and I put on a Leviton three-prong plug to it and sealed it up. That way, I can just plug it right into this here and that'll power a pull cord light in the shed. And it'll also give me an extra outlet that I used here in case you wanna power something from there. If you wanna plug in anything from USB, it's good to go as well. In this video, I kind of go through the steps of how I set up the solar power rack, which can accommodate up to four eco-worthy solar panels at 100 watts each, or you can mix and match other vendors of larger capacities, but you can't get four of those panels on there because obviously they're bigger. I also ran a uh, 
a waterproof conduit from the solar panels up to the shed, through the wall of the shed. Through the wall of the shed, sealed it with a 90 degree curve coming out there. I ran 12 gauge wires for the MC4 connectors and they are, I used 20 foot roll of that. Uh, and then I connected the MC4 connectors in parallel to the two panels. And then on the other end, I connected up the connectors because there's no connectors on them in the shed and I didn't have the right connector. So I crimped them the best I could and I soldered them and put the MC4 connectors on there and put the adapter to run to the EcoFlow. If you're gonna run solar power, cover up those panels if it's in broad daylight because they're gonna generate electricity before you start messing with it because the other ends are gonna have current flowing through them. Electricity, cover up your solar panels. The beauty is you can exchange this unit for the larger one and you can get a higher capacity or you could scale up your power in your shed or your off-grid kind of setup however you want to do it. It's a versatile solution and it's easier because you can scale your power as you need it. Eventually, if you had a bigger EcoFlow, you could probably even run a sh uh, like a small fridge, fan, a couple lights, charge up your phones, etc. on an off-grid situation. So without further ado, let's get right into the video and show you what I did. Come on, let's go! Now I have to set up the solar rack so I can put on the eco-worthy solar panels and run solar to the shed and then run lights and power from there on out. So let's get started. This is an eco-worthy uh, solar rack. It can hold up to 400 watt eco-worthy panels. So let's see how easy or hard this is to set up. There's a lot of pieces and parts. These are the foot brackets and there's two of them. And there are retaining clips for the solar panels in here. The joiners for the solar rack. And then there are the back feet. So there's four feet. You got four feet. And then you got the brackets that fit onto them. And then should you should have two short ones. For the front, because the front is shorter. And then two long ones for the back for an angle. So let's see how it's I like good. to line up my pieces so that this, these are the front bottom, those are the back bottom mounts when they're feet. And they go in like that and you screw them in and they're the plethora of parts, but it tells you what to do. It's good instruction. So, so far so good. Cross my fingers. Got the two end pieces connected with the foot pieces on there. Now I'm gonna tighten them up and put the, uh, I'm gonna join the uh, long section together with the joiner brackets and hook them up to this main section. I'm putting together these long rails. You gotta make sure that these are joined tight and straight. So I wedged one of the spare ones in here to get it even and the same gap is there but when you tighten them they're gonna torque all over the place so I guess try to keep them straight or wedge something in there because otherwise your panels will be cockeyed and when you mount them a little bit it'll sag so these little nut bracket things with the plastic things on there have curved uh, nuts on there so that when you put it in the rack here, like this, it enables you to turn it and lock in place. So you wanna take out the bolt so you can secure the racks here, like so. 
but you're going to have to do adjustments, your final adjustments so that they're straight when you're done. So there's two 100 watt panels, so I'm going to put them in series for now. But as you see in the middle brackets here, don't tighten them too tight. Also the end brackets here, well, you may have to adjust them a little bit over because if you come to here where they come up with the joint, make sure you put it where it's in the middle of the joint uh, where the bolts are. Otherwise you won't be able to get like the screw down deep enough in there to secure it properly. If you're using just two, then you can use this bracket for the sides. But if you're doing another panel, then you're going to use the joiner one here. And that's, you know, see how if you try to bring it over, you can't. So you actually have to physically slide it out, right? And they're notched so they swivel in. And then you have to bring it in and turn it. But yeah, that's what you have to look out for, the joiner plates. I'm going to try to hook this up in uh, series now and see how it works. Parallels, hooking them up is easier because you just hook the, the positives together, you know. But for now, depends on what kind of inverter you have or what you're hooking up to, what their input is. Wired up my panels in series to test and and midday sun's putting out 159 um, watts here. So yeah, that's not too bad. I was actually able to use my EcoFlow unit. It's a smaller one, EcoFlow River. Delta unit and I was able to power my soldering iron to put on the MC4 connectors and uh, for the cable I run from the solar panel into the shed the connectors here through the conduit waterproof and uh, yeah I'm about ready to put the other one through and secure it and then we can uh, go about wiring up the shed from here. It appears that the small EcoFlow cannot take the charge input from two solar panels, uh, 200 watts at least, but the large one can. And we got clouds and we're not getting much input but if you see there you go 16 watts trickle in now I'll hook this one up and you'll see it says overload so I might have to just run one panel kill me it says overload why because it can't handle it maybe I I'm running in series maybe I need to put them in parallel I don't know figure something out Yeah, I hooked up one panel only, removed the series. Don't even know, I mean, it's pulling 17 watts. Maybe I need to run it in parallel. I'll have to figure it out. Max, is input, max input it's supposed to be able to take is 110 watts, so. Got this Leviton uh, plug-in attachment hooked up, and we'll see if we can get it hooked up to here and plug it into here. So, got the uh, power uh, hooked up from the solar array into the, the EcoFlow River 2. And we're currently pulling almost 50 watts for the one panel. Um, we have this mini LED light charging, and then we have my light and the shed on. It's LED, so we're putting out like two watts, that's it. The thing is to remember with this is that 36, I think, uh, 36 volts, I think, max 
for the input on the uh, solar input uh, with an 8.8 .8 amps max as well for the solar input. So you're kind of limited to maybe one 110 watt panel, maybe a bifacial perhaps. You might want to get a bigger unit that can handle more like the EcoFlow River 2 Delta Max or Pro. Um, that can take up to 220 watts and a higher amperage rating. So you can hook up two panels in series or a parallel. So just FYI. This one though on a good sunny day can charge everything up without a problem. So the shed project's almost done for power wise. Uh, I wired up this in a box. It also has an outlet up there, but so does the EcoFlow. You can swap out that plug and you can charge up your uh, power devices for like your cordless drills and stuff in here. So. I have the panel set up in parallel and it works better that way. It doesn't give me the overload voltage as is when I had them in series. So this unit can take up to 110 watts input. Uh, as you see, we're almost peaking out in maximum. But I can charge up my devices in here whenever I need and I ran power. To the unit as well so yeah working pretty good so this little one is has to work with parallel if you have 200 watt panels see it's maxing out but if you have um, the larger EcoFlow River Delta 2 whatever the hell that is and you can run them in series because it can take 220 watts input so so far so good shed solar power Shed solar power.